In this video, I'll be explaining the very basics of animation and keyframes in Blender. So this video is geared for complete beginners who have never done any animation in Blender before. So I'll show you the very basics of adding keyframes and doing very basic animation. And if you're a complete beginner to Blender and you'd like to learn all the basic fundamentals of Blender, then definitely check out my Blender for Complete Beginners tutorial series. The link to that is in the description. And then at the end of the video, I'll be recommending a really great animation course, which you can check out if you want to get even deeper into animation in Blender. So in this video, for example, I'll just be animating this cube. So just add some kind of object to animate. And you can see right down here on the bottom of Blender, there's the timeline. So you're going to use the timeline a lot when you're doing animation. So you're going to use the space bar to play the animation and pause the animation and this little blue thing right here this is called the playhead and so you can click and drag along these numbers here and this will change the current frame and you can also use these buttons here so you can play the animation you can pause the animation and then play backwards and pause the animation you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to go frame by frame and there is a start frame and an end frame and the default is 1 and 250 and that is a 10 second animation in 20 24 frames per second and if you click here on the output properties on default the frame rate in blender is 24 frames per second now to actually animate an object in Blender, you need to add keyframes. So for example, you might put the cube over here and add a keyframe at this position. Then you would move along the timeline and then move the cube to a different position and then add another keyframe. And so the keyframe is the transformation data, which is gonna tell the objects where they're gonna be at certain parts in the timeline. So let's just do a simple animation here. So I'm gonna hit G to grab, and then I will hit X and bring the cube over on the X axis. And I now wanna add a keyframe right here to tell the cube that's where it's going to be. But I'm going to scrub this playhead over here and I'm going to go to frame one. And then to add a keyframe, you can hover your mouse in the 3D viewport and make sure you have the cube selected. And you're going to press the K button. Now in older versions of Blender, the shortcut key was the I key, but in the new Blender version of 4.1, it has been changed to the K button. So the shortcut key is K. So just select the object, press the K button, and this will bring up the insert keyframe menu. And you can choose what type of keyframe you want to add to to the object. So there are many here, but the main ones that you're going to use most of the time are the location, the rotation, and the scale, or a combination of some of them. So in this case, we just moved the cube, so we're just going to click on location. So now it's added a keyframe here in the timeline, and if I scrub the playhead over, you can see there is this little diamond. Now if I press the A key with my mouse hovered in the timeline, I can deselect and select the keyframe. Just like here in the 3D viewport, I can press A to deselect and select objects. Now when the keyframe is selected, it is yellow, and when it is deselected, it is white. Or you can also just click to select the keyframe. Now if for some reason you don't see the keyframe, that might be because the object isn't selected, so make Sure you select the object or you won't be able to see the keyframe and also sometimes if you click with your middle mouse button and then drag up here sometimes the timeline has been moved up a bit and so you might need to click with your middle mouse wheel and drag down because sometimes the timeline gets moved up and then you can't see the keyframe so just middle click and drag down so you can see it now if you press the N key to open up the side panel and select the object and go to item, you can see that this object has location values, rotation values, and scale values. And these are actually number values. Now you can see on the location it is green, and that is telling us that there are keyframes on those values. And then if I drag the playhead over here right to the keyframe on frame 1, it turns yellow, and yellow is telling us that there is a keyframe at that exact position. Now you can also add keyframes to these values by hovering your mouse over the value Value, and instead of pressing the K button, you're actually going to press the I button. So if I wanted to rotate this or add a keyframe here, I could rotate this on the Y axis and then hover my mouse over the value, press the I key, and now it's going to insert a keyframe. And then if I drag the playhead over, you can see it turns green. So that's telling us that it's added a keyframe, but this isn't the exact position where the keyframe is. Now, in order for the object to animate, we need to add another keyframe at a different position. So let's just go here to frame 100. We can now move the object. So I'll hit G to grab. I'll just bring it over on the X axis and I can just stick it over here. Now, if I move the playhead, I didn't actually add a keyframe. And so it's going to jump back to its previous transform. So I need to make sure I add a keyframe. So I'll hit G to grab, bring this over on the X axis, stick it there. And then again, remember, press the K button and we just moved it. So I can just click on location. And if you've done multiple transforms, maybe you 
moved it and rotated it and scaled it, you could use this one instead. I'll just use location. So now if I scrub back here to the starting, you can see it actually moves and there's a smooth transition between each keyframe. So Blender is moving the object from the first keyframe to the second keyframe and you can just press the space bar to watch that. Now, if you want to change where the keyframes are, you can do that by pressing the A key in the timeline to select the keyframes. The keyframes are selected if they are yellow, and you can hit G to grab, and you can drag them around. So if I wanted to give it an offset, I could move this over, and now when I play this, you can see the cube won't move to frame 100. I could also make it go faster by just selecting this single keyframe, and I could click and drag over, or if you select it, you can hit G to grab and move it over. Now if I play through this, it's going to go much faster because there's only 20 frames in between the keyframes instead of like 100. And then if you want to delete a keyframe, of course you can just select it, and just like in the 3D viewport, you can either hit the X key and delete keyframes, or you can hit the delete button to delete the keyframe. Now, if you want to override a keyframe, you can go to the exact position where the keyframe is. Then you can move the cube to a different position. You can again press the K button, and you can again insert location. So this is going to override the previous keyframe, so now it's basically ignoring the previous keyframe. It's gotten rid of it and replaced it for the new keyframe. So now instead of the cube moving over, it moves up instead. And then just to give you another example, if I move this, and rotate it and scale it all at once. Now I can hit the K button, and if I just insert location, now if I go back to this, you can see the cube has been rotated back and it's been scaled just to the scale that it was, and that's only because I used the location. So I'll just delete the keyframes and redo this. So let's move this over here. I will press the K button, and this time I'm gonna insert location, rotation, and scale. Then I will move to a later part in the animation. I will hit G to grab it, R to rotate it, and S to scale it. And because I wanna add keyframes to all these values, I'll press the K button, and this time I'll choose location, rotation, and scale. So now if I play through this, you can see it's scaling it, rotating it, and moving it all at once. Now, when you're doing lots of animation, it can be pretty tedious to press the K button every single time you want to add a keyframe. And so that is where this cool auto keying comes in. So I'll just delete all the keyframes, and I'm now going to click on this button to turn on the auto key. So what this will do is it will automatically add a keyframe whenever you add a transform. So a location, rotation, or scale. So I'll hit G to grab, R to rotate, and S to scale. Then I can move over here. I'll hit G to grab, move it over, and you can see when I hit G to grab, or R or S to move it, you can see that this little thing appears telling you that the auto key is on. And now when I place it, it automatically adds a keyframe, and so this is a much faster way to animate. I can also move here in the center, and I'll hit G, and bring it up on the Z axis, and it's gonna automatically add a keyframe. So now when I play through this, it first goes up, and then it goes back down. Now, a very common mistake with the auto key is that you might forget to turn it off after you're done using it. So that's just something to remember. When you're done animating, make sure to turn off the auto key, because then you might move some objects and then realize that you accidentally added keyframes, and it could kind of mess up your scene. So just always make sure you turn off the auto key when you're done using it. Now in between the keyframes, Blender is just making a smooth transition, and so you can see at the starting it starts to speed up, and then at the end it kind of slowly slows down. So on default it's very smooth, but you can actually change what is called the interpolation mode, and that is how the object acts in between the keyframes. So what you're going to do is press the A key again to select all the keyframes, and with your mouse in the timeline you'll press the T key, and you can change the keyframe interpolation. So there are many here, but really the main ones that you're going to use are just these three. So on default, there's the BZA, and the BZA is a nice smooth transition. And again, this one is on default. So it's going to slowly speed up and then slowly slows down. You can also press the T key and you can choose linear and linear is not going to speed up or slow down. It's kind of going to act more robotic. And so it's just going to go from one keyframe to the next keyframe and it will be at a very consistent speed. So this can be very useful as well, especially if you're creating some kind of looping animation. Maybe you're doing like a turntable and you're spinning an object or you want it to move at a very consistent speed. This is great for that. You can also press the T key and you can choose constant and 
constant is just going to go from one keyframe to the next keyframe. So you can see in between the keyframes, it doesn't appear as though it's moving. And then right when it gets to the next keyframe, it jumps over. So this is very choppy, but this can be very useful for certain parts of your animation. If you're doing a character animation and you're blocking out the poses of the character, this can be very useful for that but I will hit T and then I will change it back to BZA, which is the default. And this one is what you'll use probably most of the time. So that is the basics of adding keyframes and doing animation in Blender. But in this video, we are gonna go one step further and I'm gonna show you how to use the graph editor to just do a little bit more advanced editing with your keyframes. So to use the graph editor, we first need to open it up and it is a new window in Blender. So if you hover your mouse in the corner, you can click and drag out and this will split the window. So there are now two different different windows. Now you can change the type of any window by clicking on this drop down here and this will change the editor type and we're going to change this to the graph editor. So the graph editor might look a little bit complex, but it's actually not that complicated. Let me just make this a bit smaller by dragging this, and I can drag this smaller as well. And let's drag this a bit smaller, and I will press the N key to close that side panel. Now what I'm also going to do, just so that you're not too overwhelmed, is I'm going to just make a very simple animation so I can show you what this is doing. So I'm just going to hit X and we're going to delete the keyframes. I'm going to move the cube right over here. I will press K and I'm going to insert location. Then I'm going to move to a farther spot in the animation. I will move the cube over and then again I will press the K button and we're going to insert location. So now I'm going to show you what the graph editor does. So you can click with your middle mouse wheel to move around the graph editor. You can also hold down the control key and then click with your middle mouse wheel to change the scale of the graph editor. Now the graph editor is going to show the keyframes and then there are going to be these lines here in between the keyframes. And so this is representing the animation. Now if you press the A key, that will select and deselect the keyframes and each one of these little dots right here are a keyframe. So if I select a keyframe, keyframe here, this keyframe is now selected right there in the timeline. And if you select a keyframe, you can hit G to grab and R to rotate and S to scale. Now left and right, this is representing the time. So when I move this over from left to right, you can see that the timeline's also moving. Now up and down, this is actually going to be the animated values. So this is zero, and then you can see there's negative two, negative four, and so on. And then up here, this is two, four, six, and so on. So if it goes up, that is gonna add more values to the animation. So because the cube is moving over, there is the first keyframe, and the first keyframe is more at the starting of the animation. And then at the end, it moves to a larger number because it is moving from left to right in the 3D viewport. So if I press the spacebar to play this, you can see the cube starts to move, then it's really fast, and then it slows down. So this red line here is representing the movement of the x-axis. Now right over here on this side panel, you can click on these arrows to open them up, and these are going to show you all of the keyframe values. So there is a Y location, and that's going to be forward and backwards. There is the Z location, and that's going to be up and down. And then there's the X location, and if I click on that, that is going to actually select the X location. So if you have a large scene with lots of different objects and lots of locations, rotations, and scales, and if you have maybe a character which has lots of bones, all of those values are going to show up right here. And if you click on the arrow here, that's going to minimize it because there is the object transform, and that is transforming or moving the object. And you can see Above that, there is the cube. So here's the cube object. You can rename it here if you want to. Then the cube has an action and it has a transform. And then if you open the arrow up again, there is location values for that transform. Now why the graph editor is really useful is because you can do much more advanced editing to the keyframes. So for example, let's say I wanted the cube to slowly speed up, but then right at the end, I want it to stop very fast. Well, this line here is representing the animation. So so if you select the keyframe, the keyframe has these things here, which are called handles. And you can select the handles and you can move them around to change how the animation plays. So if I drag this handle really small, now right here, this is very sharp. You can see how sharp the line is. So if I now play this, you can see the cube is moving and then the cube stops very fast. It almost looks like it hits into a wall and it stops. 
or if I drag this keyframe way over here or drag the handle over, now if I go back here and play this, you can see it slows down very smoothly. So this is very useful for changing how you want your animation to look. And if I drag this handle up, now this line here, at this point in the animation, it's higher. It is a larger number. So if I go back to the starting in the timeline and play this, the cube's actually gonna go forward and then it's gonna go back. You can see it goes forward just a little bit and then it goes back because this number value here is actually higher than the final keyframe. So you can select the keyframe and hit S to scale to scale the handles. You can rotate them or you can hit G to grab and move them around or you can select the corners of the handles and move that. Now, if you select a handle, you can also press the V key and the V key is going to change the keyframe handle type. So for example, I could change it to the vector and the vector will make it very sharp. So this is just what we did earlier. So the cube moves and then it abruptly starts. Or if you select the keyframe and press the V key, you could change it to free instead. And then free will allow you to just move these handles freely. You could also select it and press V and you could choose the automatic. And this one is going to change it back to that like BZA. So it's going to be a nice smooth animation. So that is the very basics of how to do animation in Blender and how to use keyframes. So I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching. And if you're a complete beginner to Blender and you'd like to learn all the basic Basic fundamentals of Blender, then definitely check out my Blender 4 Complete Beginners tutorial series. It's a 14 part tutorial series and it's completely free on my YouTube channel. And if you enjoy animation and you'd like to get more advanced into animation in Blender, then I highly recommend checking out the Alive Animation course from P2 Design. And that course is packed with so much more animation content and it's great for both beginner and intermediate Blender users. So the course covers all the basics of animation, it also goes into more detail on how to use the graph editor and the timeline and adding keyframes and there are also some beginner exercises in the course and the course also covers how to create a walk cycle as well as many other animation exercises so i can highly recommend this course if you want to learn much more about animation in blender so if you'd like to purchase the course then you can check it out with my affiliate link in the description and if you purchase the course through my affiliate link then i'll earn a small commission so that's also a great way to help support me and this channel but i hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching